my last Georgina video got a lot of comments about how I mount my camera to my mask. Uh, I will, I don't really like doing gear videos. I don't, I just, I just don't like them. So I'm not going to be doing a gear video of what my gear looks like or a video of how I mount my camera. But what I would, will do, and I'll provide a link to this uh, when I get it done, is I'll put up on my website, alabasterslim.com. I'll have a picture and a tutorial of how I mount my camera where I got the mount from. No feature videos this week, so just on with the game. Are you technically being concerned? Okay, guys, you guys are all good to go. Get out on the field. Get some fun time. We arrived to our second mission late along with a lot of the other Canadians. As a result, we weren't able to join in and had to wait for the first respawn. This, however, did give us a chance to plan our advance and counter any enemy movements. Our latest intel was that the Korean team, in purple, was moving along Ho Chi Minh Trail along the south. Zach, Julian, and myself were going to move along that trail and take out anyone we came across. Fire to the right! Get the trail! Okay, let's take Hold a further position on the trails. Yep. yep. No need to run, guys. Let's move it up slow. Let's not tie ourselves out. Here's some footprints that actually look like an animal or something. It could be human. No, I think that's I think these trudging through like this are a human. Coyote or something. You got anything? There's over there. We should try and position ourselves up there. You guys spot in here? Once we'd found the trail, we did two things. One of us would periodically stop and take a knee, scan the surroundings, and focus on finding any enemy. Moving through this kind of terrain is difficult, and if you're thinking about trudging through the snow and pushing branches out of your face, you're not doing a great job of scanning. No contacts. You okay, buddy? Yeah, I just it's still it's still filming. You're good. Wait, is that the boundary? No, it's just the path. Got something? The second thing we did, as you can see here, is we kept our spacing. There was a chance we'd be walking into an ambush, a larger enemy force, or both. If we kept spaced apart a good distance, there was a better chance we wouldn't all be taken out in the initial volley, which would let us respond more efficiently to contacts. Opening to the left, clearing to the left. I got two straight out ahead, pretty far. Quiet, quiet, quiet. All right, we heard you. Yep, I heard you. Let's move it up. We don't have the range in the woods. Once Julian spotted someone, we sprang into action. Zach. All right, let's get some firing positions. Our plan now is pretty simple, and we didn't need to communicate it to each other all that much. We all find good cover positions, and since the people we've spotted are moving towards us, we'll wait until they're good and close to engage them. There is no sense moving out of great cover only to get shot. Rohan is uh, red, by the way. You got any purples out there? They're friendly. Friendly. Is that Nara way up there? No. But they're red. They're all red? They're friendly. Well, they may have been friendly, but at least we responded to a possible threat in a well thought out way. Even that way. Oh, that guy's purple. You have targets straight across from us. Enemy spotted. Remember what I said before? There is no sense in moving out of good cover nope. only to get shot. <sighs> Looking 
Hit! Some time has passed and I've respawned. I wasn't able to link up with Zack and Julian again, but I did notice what looked to be a wide flank by the enemy team, so I moved to counter it. Watch now as I move up on this EI, all while I stay in his field of view. I clued in while moving up that the person I was approaching had some pretty bad tunnel vision. He was focused really heavily on two of my teammates to my front and right. By moving slowly through the woods, my movement wouldn't trigger his vision, and I'm able to sneak right up next to him. Copy that, Jarvis. Guys, we're taking fire in Tombstone! Coming from the Ho Chi Minh Trail, so... That's us. It's just follow the trail back, guys. An effective use of radios really made a difference in this game. There were actually very few of us who had radios, however each of us who had one made sure never to stick together and to surround ourselves with people who weren't connected. It meant we had good communication without any meaningless chatter that would be communicated to the entire team quickly and efficiently. If you ID them. Uh, red? All right. Red coming in! Red coming in! Red coming in too, so come on. We ended up making it all the way back to Tombstone without meeting any contacts. Tune in next week for my final video from the Georgina Icicle Thrust Big Game. That's it, that's the whistle.